Well, we already uh, discussed high performance computing and its importance. Uh, there is a class of computing, which is uh, typically a little on the edge of high performance computing, then the agent based modeling. And so if we, when we were doing our material science, we had a nice pretty picture of a new nanomaterial. Uh, that uses fundamental Newton's laws, or Schrodinger's equation, or Dirac equation. The fundamental equations of matter to describe atoms, electrons, and molecules. You want to not just um, simulate materials, you want to simulate the stock market, uh, the transportation system, or the reaction of uh, population to disease, or some unexpected shock like a 9-11 event. Then the basic entities are not subject to Newton's laws. Uh, people do not obey Newton's laws. So that behavior follows eventually from Newton's laws, but you can't make a model of people as bunches of atoms and electrons and molecules and realistically solve that to decide what they're gonna do when you have a 9-11 event. Rather, you uh, introduce a new type of science where you uh, um, set up a person as a so-called agent. An agent is a computer entity which uh, receives, uh, has a set of rules in it which tell, it, which tell you what it does when certain things happen. And so you, agent-based modeling is very important. It's been used for many years by the Department of Defense with a technology called HLA or um, DIS, which uh, is used to do those their simulations and uh, use cases 23 and 24 um, on um, uh, spreading a disease and reaction of um, people to, to, to uh, scenarios, uh, those use agent-based modeling, which is a very important technology for the subset of cases where it's, where it's relevant. Um, and typically, uh, if you read the, the, the simplest books, it will tell you to use a so-called event code a driven simulation to, to evolve agents, but that's the world's most inefficient, uh, slowest thing. It's, it's the most precise and best if that's all you can do, but typically you use some heuristic to make it run faster. Okay. Well, we already mentioned fusion, and we actually showed you the example of my picture ending up with a fused bottle at the top uh, right. And uh, there's another magic term here, knowledge management. Data fusion and knowledge management are not very well defined. Except it's obvious what the intuitive meaning is clear. We have a huge amount of data, which remember is turned into information and knowledge. And we have and we have that from many different sources. And we need to combine it to get the answer we want. And that's what data fusion and knowledge management are doing. There are many people who work in this field, and it's rather often rather hard to find out exactly what they do. And but I believe that slide, which is mentioned here, the raw data, the decision slide, uh, shows the tip, the essential idea. You have a workflow. Workflow is very important, uh, and it's uh, present in nearly a lot of these different use cases we have, where you have multiple services and clouds linked together, typically with data. Where here we're using data in this generic fashion to mean data or information or knowledge flowing from one service to another, are getting refined or are transformed and, and filtered as it goes from one to the other and ending up with a more better understanding by, or hopefully alternative understandings. And the simplest type of fusion actually is to just take a portal, take six sources of information about a subject and place them one in each of six gadgets. And that's uh, one form of fusion, but most fusion would be a little more sophisticated than that. Um, when we come to global optimization, where we're summing over um, giant, we're parameterizing the world, summing over all the information we have, uh, that's effectively a, fuse, a fusion algorithm, because it's uh, taking disparate things and adding them together uh, to reach some sort of conclusion. So that's this uh, exascale global optimization ego uh, classification. So then we now come to that. <coughs> 
So it's a, it's a rather flamboyant title, which were, I came, uh, which was invented in some meeting I was at a few years ago, and it basically <coughs> points out that, that there are a class of artificial intelligence problems. Phrase this giant optimization of the many variables. This is what I call global machine learning. And the case that's most familiar is called chi-squared or maximum likelihood formulations. Which, if you take the log of the maximum likelihood, you always get, uh, uh, you know, and you take the right sign, you always end up minimizing a sum of terms. And those terms are a mix of observational data or derived data and parameters which you wish to determine. And this uh, type of artificial intelligence formulation is pretty different from the uh, rule based or expert system AI. And it's uh, probably the most appropriate when you really have a lot of information, because you can try to minimize the sum of a billion terms, but you can't really uh, reliably apply a billion rules. They will interfere with each other. Whereas if you sum them up and try to minimize them in a least squares fashion, you can get them to trade off against each other in the most satisfactory fashion. One example we have, a very simple example, is called multidimensional scaling. Where if you want to solve the AI problem of mapping um, entities in the, either in the non-vector space or an arbitrary vector space to three dimensions, then you have a global sum over n of them, essentially n squared um, measures of similarity, and you minimize the weighted sum of the squares of the similarities minus the predicted similarities when you assign them to a vector space. Another good example of ego, in fact, probably the most important, uh, come from uh, information retrieval, uh, where you take the world's documents and try to summarize them or find topics implied by them and so on. I expect ego to grow in importance, and you can say learning networks are also in this area. I didn't really classify anything as security. Um, when we discussed the NIST activity, we noted there was a security and privacy uh, working group. Uh, security is essentially present in all use cases. Um, and it, the word security covers many, many areas. Authentication authorization, how you log in and you decide that you use a computer or you access a piece of data. There are lots of privacy issues, either especially in the healthcare area, say because of personal data, or in commercial areas, uh, because due to proprietary data. <coughs> we also have to worry about uh, tampering uh, when um, you know you, you have these pictures of um, uh, the man in the loop or whatever. You know, Attacker on the loop, where you have a nice workflow, and unfortunately, one of the services has got uh, corrupted and is uh, stealing what the data is coming in and spitting out garbage, which confuses the world. Um, so, there are um, important issues in security when you do cloud computing, because cloud computing is shared computing. And so, you even um, have on the, so you worry that if you have a um, proprietary application running, it's using, it's telling you um, uh, which uh, the company will tell you the company what types of calculations the company is doing, even though the there is no uh, trivial way of um, finding out. Maybe another program running next to that uh, program can see what data sets are being accessed and. Effectively look at the execution model of that program and extract and effectively uh, compromise the uh, um, proprietary uh, nature of the computation. So, in the end, it points out that the three broad areas commercial applications, proprietary defense has incredible national security issues. And health and social studies, and some of those in the network science area, have uh, um, privacy issues from the use of personal information. <laughs>